Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we would look at the free cash flow valuation approach. What does that mean? First, we have to understand how we compute the free cash flow. What does that mean? Then we are going to use it to value a company, to put a price, to put a value on a company. As always, before I start, I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn, subscribe to my YouTube to view additional lectures, and on my website, farhatlectures.com, you will find additional courses and resources for this course, as well as your accounting courses, especially if you are studying for your CPA exam. So let's go ahead and start with the free cash flow valuation approach. So simply put, what is the free cash flow? What does that mean? It means, am I getting cash for free? Not at all. It's how much cash would I receive if I was an investor? What does that mean? It means if you are an owner in this company, how much cash would you receive? Think about if you are an owner in a business. Let's assume you own your own business. You want to know how much cash you would receive after you deduct certain things that we are going to deduct. Like, for example, what? For example, if you have a business, you need to operate the business. You need to pay for your expenses, operating expenses. You also need to invest in the business itself. You may want to buy new equipment, new machinery, new vehicles. So those are expenditure you have to pay for, you have to commit to. Then after all things are done, what's left to you as an investor, as the owner, is the free cash flow. And there's a specific formula that we're going to go over, but this is the basic idea. How much would I get? I'm the owner. How much would I get? What's the discretionary cash flow? Cash flow that I can take from this business and do anything with it. Now, the more that amount is, the better off I am. Now, why do we use this free cash flow? Why do we have to compute this free cash flow? Because not all companies pay dividend. And if you remember, if the company pay dividend, what happens is, is you can use the dividend discount model. If you remember, the dividend discount model will take D1, the future, dividend divided by k which is the required rate of return minus g to value a company well if the company don't pay dividend and a lot of companies don't pay dividend so how do we, how do we value a company what's going to happen i'm going to i'm going to give you the answer now we're going to replace this d1 by the future cash flow that's all that's all what we're going to be doing basically that's the basic idea so if you understand the dividend discount model this should be easy to understand. We're going to use some accounting terminology here and there, but the idea is the same. So it's basically an alternative approach to the dividend discount model to value a company using the free cash flow. What is the free cash flow? It's the cash flow available to the firm. It's available to the firm in a sense that they can do anything with it. It's their, they can meet and say, okay, now this is how much cash we have after we committed to everything we need to commit and pay for. It's all the cash that's available to the equity holders, to the owners of the company, net of capital expenditure after we invest what we need to invest in the company to grow. So the free cash flow models are valid for any firm because all firm will have cash flow. Therefore, you can use this free cash flow model. Obviously, you want it to be positive, not negative and can provide a useful insight about the firm beyond the dividend discount model because cash is what matters. When you run a company, when you invest in a company, what matters for analysts, what matters for managers, what matters for owners is how much cash am I going to receive at the end of the day because this is why you invest in a company. Okay, So you, you're going to discount this free cash flow. We're going to see how we compute this. The FCFF at the weighted average cost of capital. We already know what the weighted average was, the capital whack, to find the value of the firm, to find the value of the firm. So notice what it says here. We said free cash flow models. There's more than one model, but we're going to, you know, they're all basically the same. The first thing we want to start with is how do we compute the free cash flow to the firm? So how do we get to that number? Well, the free cash flow to the firm is the after-tax cash flow generated by the firm operating net of so after the cash flow after we pay taxes but we still have to pay for investments in capital especially if the company is growing that's a big expenditure for example a company like amazon they do generate cash flow a lot of it but what happens is they take this cash flow and they reinvest in the company same thing with netflix they reinvest in new movies and networking capital what's networking capital Current assets minus current liabilities. You need to buy inventories. You need to buy supplies. You need to finance your account receivable. So you need this money to run your business. So after the, after you take care of your investments, after you take care of networking capital, what's left? You can do whatever you want with it. You, you can give it to the owners. Uh, you, you can do whatever. 
Okay, but usually you will give it to the owner sets. That, that's why owners invest in the company to get that free cash flow. So it includes cash available to both debt and equity holders. And it's equal to, so this is how we compute the free cash flow. We're going to take EBIT, which is earning before interest and taxes, times one minus the tax rate. We're going to explain each component separately. We're going to add back the depreciation. Not only the depreciation, we'll add back depreciation. We'll add back amortization. We'll add back bad debt expense. We add back any expense that we took that was not a not that was not a cash flow. So simply put, when we are computing our earnings, so how do you how do you get to how do you get to EBIT? How do you get to EBIT? You take your sales minus your expenses, your operating expenses. Now, part of your operating expenses are non-cash expenses, mainly depreciation. When we talk about non-cash expense, you think of depreciation. But depreciation is not the only non-cash expense. You have amortization, but that expense. Therefore, what we need to do to find the free cash flow for the firm, you need to add back depreciation. Then you need to deduct capital expenditure because capital expenditure is not on the income statement. Capital expenditure is how much you are planning to invest in property, plant, and equipment to grow your company. Then you subtract any increase in networking capital. Networking capital means how much you will need mainly inventory and supplies to operate your business because that's what you need to keep on running the company. So EBIT is earning before interest and taxes. Now, that, now, why do we take EBIT before interest and taxes? Then we multiply it one minus the tax rate. Because when we compute EBIT, when we compute earnings before interest and taxes, we are going to have some expenses here that are non-cash. And I already told you, like depreciation. But those expenses, they're going to give us a tax break because we have those expenses embedded in this number, embedded in EBIT, included in EBIT. Well, what's going to happen? It's going to reduce our tax bill. Then after we reduce our tax bill, we add back those expenses that, that, that were non-cash, such as depreciation. And don't worry, we'll work an example. But this is basically why we take EBIT multiplied by one minus the tax rate to pay the taxes first. Then we add back the expenses that they were not in cash because those expenses were good for us. They served us well because they reduced our tax bill. TFC is the corporate tax rate. Network NWC is networking capital, which is current assets minus current liabilities. If it if it was not giving in the problem, so Eagle Products EBIT is six hundred and twenty dollars. Its tax rate is thirty percent. Its depreciation is thirty five dollars. Let me show you the effect of this. So if EBIT is six hundred and twenty, it means you're going to take six hundred and twenty times. Point three. And why are we doing this? We are doing this to find our tax bill. So 630 times 0.3 equal to 186. Then what we do, we're going to take this one, uh, we're going to add to the 186, this 35, 35 million or 35,000 or whatever 35 of. Okay, we're going to add back the depreciation. Now, why do we do this? Why do we do this? Here's what happened. When we computed our, when we computed the 620, we took sales, minus various expenses, we came up with 620. Now, within those various expenses were $35 of depreciation. Let's assume that $35 wasn't there. So if that $35 wasn't there, our EBIT would have been at 35 would have been 620 plus 35 is 655 times 0.3. Let's do 6, 655.3 times 0.3, that's going to give us a tax bill of $196.50. So what I'm trying to say is because the depreciation was a non-cash expense, it reduced our tax bill from 186, uh, reduced our tax bill from 196 to 186. All what I'm trying to illustrate is the effect of a tax deduction on your tax bill. Simply put, by including depreciation, you reduced your tax bill. Okay, now another way to find the difference is you'll take 35% uh, times, let's find first, let's, let's find the difference, 196.5 minus 186. Just, I will show you how it works, 196.5 minus 186. So you saved yourself $10.50, 10.5 million or $10.50. Simply put, 
How can I find this $10.50? I will take 35 times 0 0.3. 35 times 0.3. Let's me do it. 35 times 0.3. It's going to give me $10.50. So simply put, by having 35 million of depreciation, that saved me 10.5 million on my taxes. I hope this makes sense. And you see the difference between the, the difference between the tax bill. Therefore, I will take EBIT, compute my taxes, then add back non-tax expenses because those non-tax expenses help me substantially in reducing my bill. So I'm going to take, so simply put, I'm going to take this, pay the taxes 30%, add 35, subtract my capital uh, expenditure, deduct the increase in working capital, I'm going to find my free cash flow. Therefore, I'm going to take EBIT times pay my taxes, add back my depreciation. The depreciation helped me reduce this taxes, subtract my capital expenditure, subtract my increase in working capital. And this money, the board of directors are going to meet and decide they can do whatever they want with it. And the higher this number, the better off you are as an owner and the higher is the value of the company. Just the more free cash flow you have, you can do whatever you want with it. Now you're going to take this free cash flow and remember the dividend discount model, D1 divided by K minus G, same concept. We're going to take the free cash flow. This is basically summarizing the formula rather than K, rather than the required, the required, the required rate of return, we're going to use the weighted average cost of capital minus G. So that's basically the same concept, basically the same concept. Let's take a look at an example to illustrate this concept. The Adam Corporation cash flow from operation before interest, depreciation, and taxes was 1.8. So EBIT is 1.8. Uh, and expect that this will grow at 5% per year. So G for this example equal to 5%. So we expect to grow at 5%. To make this happen, the firm will have to invest an amount equal to 18% of pre-tax cash flow per year. So simply put, what we're saying in this statement is for us to grow at 5%, we have to take whatever we have in cash flow, 18% of that and reinvest in the company. So simply put, we're going to have to reinvest 1.8 times 18%. That's going to be our capital investment to keep on growing. To keep on growing, you have to keep buying uh, uh, property, plant and equipment and expand your company. The tax rate for our purposes is 21%. Depreciation was 240,000 and, uh, and expected to grow at the same rate as the operating cycle. So it's going to expect this to grow at the same rate. The operate the appropriate market capitalization rate, K, and here we're going to assume K and WAC are equal to each other. For the unleveraged cash flow is 11%. Simply put, the required rate of return or the WAC is 11%. And currently we have 4 million in outstanding debt. Use the free cash flow approach to calculate the value of this firm. So how much is this firm is worth? Well, let's start with EBIT. EBIT is 1.89 to be more specific, 1.89 million, 1,890,000. Then we're going to have to add depreciation to it. That's going to give us taxable income because this was, notice here, it's before depreciation. Okay, before depreciation. Therefore, we add depreciation. Then we compute our taxes. Our taxes are, are 343980 So we're going to deduct the taxes. We're going to deduct the taxes and come up with $1,294,020. And we're going to add depreciation. Okay, we're going to add depreciation to it. Okay, so we're going to subtract the taxes. Obviously, we're going to subtract the taxes. Then this is, then we're going to add, we're going to add, the depreciation. We're going to add the 252 to come up with after tax unleveraged income plus depreciation. Now we're going to take, now we're going to subtract the capital expenditure. Remember the capital expenditure is 1.89 million multiplied by 18%, which is 340,200. So after tax, after we deduct the capital expenditure, we are left with 1,205,000 and 820. Now we can find the value of the firm. We'll take this number, the free cash flow, divided by K, which is, again, we're going to assume the K and WAC are the same here, minus G, and the value of the firm is $20,097,000. Now, 
it's easy now. You can take this and divide it by the number of shares to find out what's the price per share. But the value of the firm overall is $20,097,000. If you like this recording, please like it and share it. Don't forget to visit my website, farhatlectures.com. If you are studying for your CPA exam, make sure to visit my website. I do have additional resources that's going to help you succeed. You're going to study for your exam once in your lifetime. It's a lifetime investment. Okay, so don't shortchange yourself. At least if you don't re if you if you don't want anything from my website, go check how your university stand up against other universities in terms of the CPA exam. Study hard, good luck, and most importantly, stay safe.